All right, guys, we're back with episode two of the Coach Spiration series, and I'm here with none other than the Alec Lewis, who we went to high school at the same high school, not together because I'm a lot older than him. Basketball superstar, tears it up on the court, especially Wednesday nights. You tear it up on the court. Uh, but nonetheless, this episode series is meant to inspire other love-powered coaches who might be a little tired, inspire love-powered coaches, and give you practical tips, techniques, and tactics from what I believe uh, to be from, from some of the best coaches on the planet. Alec is another one of these coaches at PFP who uh, you're going to hear it today, hear his passion, and hear some of the things that he does that he probably doesn't even know that he does. My job is to pull those things out of him. Um, but just as a coach, you make such a big impact. You help so many kids and they connect so well with you. And so I want to start today by really figuring out and uh, learning what your kind of origin story was for how you came about as a coach. And I know it's kind of a funny story right along yeah. the way, but like, what was it that led you to coaching? But more importantly, once you found it, once you found coaching in PFP, what was it that was like, this is definitely it. Like, I want to do this. Mm -hmm. Like, what was it? So and the story to begin with. Yeah, how did yeah, you yeah. Uh, come into this? So, so I've had coaching experience um, prior to coming to PFP, but I think so. Like in the high school, I used to help with the Brunswick basketball camps and stuff. So that was yeah. kind of my first taste of what coaching was like. And I, I mean, I was in high school and like a little bit of college at the time, so I didn't really get a there wasn't really a love and a passion for it at the time. But um, you know, I guess God was showing me like opening those doors for me, giving me those opportunities. And then uh, in college, was we did the same thing. We would run camps there, and I you know, that had a little coaching experience. Like, um, so I coached there. And so I graduated in 2020 from college, and that was during the whole pandemic. Um, so you know, I was at home, and I was trying to find work and everything. And so I started working at Costco for a little bit. Um, you know, that was one of, the, one of the other places that was open. Um, I worked in the warehouse, and that was, that was, it was cool. It was a good experience. And um, eventually that led me to working at a golf course because one of my best friends worked there for a little while. That's right, and I forgot about so, that. Right. So I was huge into golfing that summer. And I just remember one out of the blue, one of my friends, like good family friends that I've known for a really long time was currently working here at PFP. And uh, she reached out to me and said, hey, look, I, um, I know you had experience coaching and stuff, but, and we're looking for trainers. Um, I was wondering if you're interested in stopping by. And at the time I, you know, I didn't, I went to school for business. Uh, I graduated college with a business degree and a marketing minor. Um, I didn't have really any, besides the coaching certain camp, uh, like coaching the camps and stuff. That was the only my, that was the only background I really had about training. And, and we worked out in college and stuff, so I guess I, I had that background as well. But then, um, so I was like, am I even qualified for this? Um, and she was just like, you know, just come in and talk, talk to talk to people and just kind of see where it's at. And I remember stepping into PFP. Um, I think it was like a week later. For the first time, and which is weird because I've never, I never heard of PFP until it was brought up that time. We got to do better marketing. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so I remember walking into the door, and it was just even just walking in, it just there was just a feeling that really hit that I was like, wow, this place is like super cool. And then I remember being greeted by everybody that walked in. Um, you know, the working doe fights, all, all the coaches came over and said hi to me and introduced themselves. And um, I know for me that was a really special thing. Just. Um, I know you guys very, made me feel very noticed. So, so that was kind of my first uh, step into what PFP you was. You showed up in a suit and tie. Yeah. <laughs> Walks into a gym where everyone's wearing gym clothes and he yeah. comes in and sort of interview, suit and tie. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so Joe, Joe and I had an interview before that and he asked me that day, he was like, hey, like, do you want a shadow? And he was like, we can either do it today or we can do, reschedule. I was like, I guess we can do it today. So I, you know, I walked in with a suit and tie and everything. So it was, it was pretty cool. They still... Uh, bring it back up, bring it up today. So it's fun. So that's a, but, I love that story, dude. Yeah, I love it. And the rest is history. And it's honestly, that's maybe like a, a good lead into talking about what is it that you do that makes such a big impact, impact in the students' lives, the student athletes' lives that you work with. Because one of the things you said is when you walked in, you were greeted and you made, you were made to feel special. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that we obviously do in here intentionally to help a young man or woman uh, feel special and be open to what it is we're gonna deliver from a strength and conditioning side of things too. Uh, but what are some of those things, man, that you, and I know it might be like, you gotta really think through it because right now you do it so naturally, like the things that you do with the athletes to make them feel special, feel comfortable. I think special and comfortable are like two really important words mm -hmm. if you're gonna have a bigger impact in their life. Like what do you do 
that allows you to accomplish those two things and check those two boxes? How do you make them feel special and how do you make them feel comfortable? So I think making them feel special, kind of like what you said, greeting them by first name. Um, I know now I'm, I'm a lot more comfortable being loud in the gym now, so whenever I see athletes walk in that I know are gonna be in my class, I'm screaming their name. Like, just like make it, it could be, I could be all the way from the other side of the gym, but like making them know that they hear me, giving them a point, or um, just letting them know that I see them. Like, I'm, I'm acknowledging them as they're coming in. Um, so that's one way I really try to make them feel special and then make them feel comfortable. Um, asking questions, I think a lot of athletes don't, or just a lot of people in general don't get asked about themselves a lot. Um, so I think just taking the time to ask them you know, what is, how their day is, uh, how their sport is going, how, how life itself is going for them. Um, I know a lot of them tend to really open up when, it, when they, they're like, oh man, somebody's actually interested in mm -hmm. kind of what's going on in my life right now. So, um, and just being in the summer, I need to work on just be very present in that moment when I am asking like what's going on in life, just, um, just being attentive, you know? So. so it goes back to the quote, uh, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And so as a coach, by starting to ask your players, ask your athletes questions about their life outside of sports, mm -hmm. it's so uncommon. It's such, it's such low hanging fruit though. Like it's such an easy thing to do, but man, it's so uncommon that that makes a young man or woman feel really yeah. special at the end of the day. And like you see them. And then the first name thing, like that's, that's genius because you know, how often as a coach do you look at, you know, a young men or women and say, hey, Sarah, it's good to see you, right? The first name is really special to a person. Right. So that's cool. What is it at this point, when you look ahead, like at the impact you want to make and uh, kind of like the legacy you want to leave as a coach, because I know this is something a lot of our coaches think about, right? Like begin with the end in mind. Like what do I want to be able to say is true at the end of my coaching journey? What's your why at this point for why you coach and why you show up every day and you give so much to these kids? Sometimes it feels like you're not getting a lot in return. Mm -hmm. Like, what's the why? What's the driver for you? I think the biggest driver is seeing the happiness and joy that comes from people building confidence, um, falling in love with the sport. Um, I know for me personally, like watching athletes either seeing how excited they get when they hit a new PR or seeing how excited they get when they made their basketball team or baseball team or whatever team that is. And just when they really start to see the difference in themselves and you can see the confidence. Um, we can I'll talk about so many athletes that we, when we first met them, you know, they were just very self-conscious, um, didn't have a lot of belief in themselves and just seeing the massive difference um, in just who they are as people and how, how they're learning how to lead their teams, how they're learning how to um, be good teammates, how they're learning how to treat coaches, parents, um, their friends and stuff. Um, just so, because I know me personally, I wish I would have understood the mental game and just um, a lot of the lessons that we teach here, I wish I would have un understood though that in the middle school and high school. And I think, um, don't get me wrong, I'm very happy with where I got in my sports career as well as um, just in life in general. But mm -hmm. I know I can see the significant difference it makes in a lot of athletes. So. I love it, man. So, any tips, tactics, techniques, practical things, um, advice you would give to a coach who is looking to connect better, build a better relationship, make a bigger impact in their athlete's life? Like any, like very, like off the top of your head, things that you do, things that you watch other coaches in PFP do, like practical things that it would would help a coach make a bigger impact. So, definitely reaching out to them outside of outside just the gym, um, like instead of, you know, only talking to them while they're in the gym, texting them when they, when you know they have a game, showing up to games, that's, that's a huge one as well. Um, showing up to games and just, you know, talking to them afterwards and texting them afterwards about, hey, you did great. Or just, you know, if you know they have a tournament one week or game event, um, checking in on them afterwards and just, you know, like, hey, like, like, how'd it go? Like, I think that's a huge, like, man, like, like coach would be shown to me like he um he remember or they he or she remembered that i had this event going on this how big this how important it was to me um so i think that's a big one yeah just checking checking in on them outside of just when they're in the gym and i think that's the biggest one i got yeah, yeah right on all right any last words for like you're talking to a coach now who's burnt out who's tired who maybe is feeling uninspired, mm -hmm. 
what is like a word of encouragement? By the way, I did not prep Alec with any of this, so he doesn't know any questions I'm asking him. What is like a word of encouragement you would share? Maybe something that would help remind them um, of the bigger picture, something you would share to a coach who's tired? Just one word? Uh, phrase, sentence, or just encouragement in general. A lecture? I think remember your why. Remember why you're doing it in the first place, why you got into the, why you joined the job in the first place, why you joined the company in the first place. Um, look at the long term, don't focus on the short term, because I know there have been plenty of times where I've been tired or burnt out and just like didn't have that, I guess, lack of motivation, but then I remember what my, what me doing my job does for other people. Mm -hmm. um, so I think um, when you're, when you're more focused on other people than you are yourself, then I, then you'll really see, then you really put yourself in a position to like, okay, I'm not just doing it for me, I'm doing it for them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what, um, you know, usually reignites my fire. So that'd be my big thing. That uh, reminds me of somebody one time said to me, because uh, I was feeling, and I've, I've had those times where I'm like, you know, I'm giving so much, I'm showing up to so many games, coaching so many athletes, and I'm tired. And they said, Andrew, the feedback loop is long. Mm. I didn't know what that meant. And they said, the one word of encouragement that you gave that 15-year-old athlete, whatever it was, it might be four years before you ever get anything back from that, right? Where they say to you, hey, that one time you said that to me, it really made a difference, right? So like the feedback loop is long. Mm -hmm. And as you were talking, that's what that made me think of. Yeah, yeah. Alec, I appreciate you, brother, for all you do for the athletes and just for your heart to serve and for your heart to make a difference in a world where athletes need love-powered coaches. They need people like you. And you are making a big difference, man. And I appreciate it big time. I appreciate that. Boom. Appreciate that. All right, y'all. We'll see you on the next episode of the Coach Coachspiration Series. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.